Hi everyone, Matt Metzger here with ABI Attachments. Welcome back to another episode of the ABI Dirt. We've got a fun episode for you today because well, we're not in the shop. I mean, as, as, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, we're actually here at Diamond Acres. This is a training and lessons facility in Southwestern Michigan. There's some neighbors of ours. Uh, we actually came up here to take a look at the Dragmaster, but I figured while we're here, uh, we might as well spend some time talking about the footing that's in this arena, but not just in this arena, in your arena. Um, so we'd love to chat and just some brief thoughts today on the impact that your footing has on the soundness, the longevity, and the performance of your horse. If you have been around the ABI family for any length of time, you know that we love to say that footing is everything because we're like super nerdy when it comes to the ground and the soil and the footing that you ride on that your horse rides on. We've got strong opinions about it because we know how significant it is for you, for your horse, for performance, for health. But here's a little secret. I'm gonna let it out of the box today. Promise not to tell my boss. <laughs> we know that footing isn't everything. It's wildly significant, but you know that genetics and training practices and regimen play a very important role in the health and longevity and performance of, of your animal. But you already knew that, and there are loads of professionals out there. Some of you are these professionals when it comes to uh, genetics, when it comes to bloodlines, when it comes to training regimens, and how that plays a role in what you're trying to accomplish with your horse, or just how much you enjoy your horse. Right? What a lot of you are still have some questions about is why we care so deeply about the footing and the role that it plays on your property and why do you need an arena drag that can accomplish the kind of things that our arena drags can accomplish. So let's talk about how footing directly impacts the health and soundness of your horse. Now, if you've been to a horse show at all <laughs> in the past couple of decades, you've seen the wild advancements that have been made when it comes to uh, devices and supplements and items that take care of your horse that promote horse health. You know, there are wraps and braces and blankets and supplements and therapeutic devices, and there's some great products out there. And some of you have found uh, some great success uh, with those products and how they take great care of your horse. But something that's often missed is the thing that you have kind of the most control over because it's already on your property. It's already right here. And when it comes to thinking about how, what you're riding on, the riding surface impacts horses, it's, it's really easy to try to, to draw that connection, the illustration over to Athletes, because that's really what your horse is, right? Uh, think of an Olympic track runner. They could run on concrete, <laughs> but there are specifically designed surfaces for that runner. Think about your daughter in gymnastics. She could do all of her somersaults and backflips in the gravel driveway, but there's specifically designed surfaces for that in a gym. The same holds true for what's beneficial for your horse in your arena. You could run your horse on bare turf. You could run your horse on extremely hard surfaces but you're gonna end up with joint issues, tendon issues, muscle issues, uh, feet and leg issues. Uh, the vast majority of horse problems are feet and legs. You've got a lot of weight and a lot of energy put onto those parts of the body and you have the ability to keep your horse safe and sound by taking care of your footing. So having a drag uh, that can decompact, having a drag that can clean up a base, having a drag that can provide cushion and sheer strength uh, to that surface so that the material appropriately binds together and displaces some of that energy that's coming off those thundering hooves. All of those steps in the footing, the, that, all of those steps in footing maintenance keeps your horse healthier for longer. And longevity is actually the second point today. So whether you have invested in your horse for pleasure or as an investment, whether your horse is your best friend or whether it's delivering some significant return on that investment from all the training hours you've spent with it uh, or anywhere in between. For some of you, it's, it's both, right? Uh, you can delay the retirement of a horse. You can delay the inevitable goodbye <laughs> with a horse if you give your horse a surface to ride on and train on uh, that will keep it healthier for longer. And I know a lot of you uh, call up and you say, no, my barn is more of a geriatric ward <laughs> than anything. And we respect that. We appreciate that. I love that I love that you love your animals. We love that you love your animals. We love your animals, which is why we're in this business and why we would love to provide you drags to take care of your footing so you can keep your horse healthier for longer. Now, if you lean on the performance side of that spectrum, let's talk just briefly about how footing impacts performance. And I'm just gonna scratch the surface on this one because there are some great minds uh, that can go more in depth on the issue. And I'm hoping later this year, we can actually sit down with those great minds and talk with people like Trevor Brazil and Sean Flerda and Dana Hokana. And you can get input from them on how their footing has impacted their performance careers. Uh, but just to give you a frame of reference, if you've never considered how the footing impacts the performance of your horse, uh, 
let's bring it back to biological basics. When you think of a horse, how does a horse survive? <laughs> how have horses survived for centuries in the wild? They're flight animals. Horses rely on their senses to quickly react to their surroundings and get out of there, to adjust, to, to pay attention to what they smell and see and feel. And this is where it comes in strong when it comes to the footing. A lot of you have been using drags for years that scratch the surface. We've talked before in I think just previous episodes about how bed springs and fence posts have been used for years as just kind of an okay standard when it comes to dragging the surface of an arena. And if that's all you got, it's better than nothing. But just because you can't see a, a, a danger, a risk, a, an undulation, a compaction point in your arena doesn't mean that your horse can't feel it. And that's why we strive hard with all of our arena drags to, to, to build drags, to invent drags, innovate drags that, that actually decompact, and you hear me use that word a lot, to decompact the footing, to clean up the base, so that way, as your horse is riding across the arena and you're giving the rein cues and the saddle cues and the seat cues, uh, that that horse can pay attention to you and isn't distracted by the uncertainty of what's under, under their hoods. Uh, we actually talk with people all the time when they call in and say, you know, it's the strangest thing because when I'm in the south side of my arena, uh, my horse is listening to my cues just fine. But when I get to the north side, it seems like I just can't get them to follow the cues. And it's the exact same cues. I'm trying to do the same movement. I'm just in a different part of the arena. So we get to have great conversations with people about how proper arena maintenance and arena grooming practices can address those issues, can actually improve performance because as you loosen your footing, decompact your footing and clean up your base and level your footing, you're actually making it easier for your horse to pay attention to you and your cues because they're not distracted by what's going on underneath their feet. Their survival instincts are calmed, they can relax, and they can pay attention to you, thus boosting your performance. So I wanna wrap up today with an example of what some, some great footing looks like. And this is actually what prompted this whole idea of being up here at Diamond Acres today is because this is some really great all around footing. So, uh, and this is, right, the layman's test, right? If you can lean down, get a good grip on it, and it holds together when you open your hand back up, but then as you work it, it breaks apart easily. This is an example of some footing that's got a great balance of sand, silt, clay. Um, it's, this is locally sourced, and I know every quarry is different, and all of you, everybody's preference is different about the ratios there. Everybody has their own, their own science behind it, right? Uh, but as far as a footing that has some, provides some great cushion, uh, provides some great shear strength, uh, that holds together well, that's well watered. I think they watered this arena just yesterday. Uh, it's the right amount of moisture content. You don't see any water squeezing out of this, but it's not just powdery. Uh, this, is, this is some fantastic footing to, to work in. So if you've got any questions about your footing, if you've got any questions about uh, whether or not you've got the right drag, the right setup for your drag in your arena, this is why we're here. This is why we've got factory reps and product specialists uh, to help answer some of those questions. So give us a call. We'd love to help you take care of your horse. Uh, we'd love to help you keep your horse around as long as possible. We'd love to help you maximize the performance uh, for both you and your horse. And we'd love to talk about your footing to do it. See you next time.